Sorry about that. Need to get some tea. And the cosmos venting fumes from beneath and out the senseless quadrant. For the quadrant is no cube. It is some such infallible carousel where unity breaks the swivel. The quadrant is tame. <coughs> the quadrant is tame and variable, quiet and loud. But only insofar as depth can seek in the wood for prey, can seek long and long for the new flesh. I forge for and uncover derivatives, the great math of the psyche, and then it will be as it is now, and that beneath is always out. Above is out. To go within is to go even further out. The only way that one could dishonor this, our universe, and eternity, and the wheels within wheels, and penetrate the quickly enveloping call, to, uh, enveloping the worlds and, and the remnants of eternity in a consumptive shell that dislocates the freeze from pain and makes a formal feeling state within the bones and burns the static and everything then concrete, though insanely dynamic. The only way to penetrate the seeming and go within is to remain unmoving, which actually is how things were for so long, held over the hazard, the brink that is hazardous in the fall, held over the fall by the clasping concept of stasis to my shirt, pulling me back over the silent mouth of the abyss and onto staunch ground a few feet away. I step forwards and look down, the chasm eddying in a while. I am in this case being metaphorical by transposing the way things were to an image of myself before a cliff. The damage is down to billions and billions more. Few and far between, a pragmatic invention unveiled itself before the symbols of my existence, telling me of a a new zones of coincidence. In careful, scrupulous mood, the invention examined me, asserting through the new nose <coughs> and punitive paraphrase that this was it. The voice in head. Uh, Alice, I, uh, I told you, uh, I told you once about it. I told you once about it, but phrased it wrong. I guess it, I seemed a bit off, but this voice that was my body and a sourceless voice, chastising me, almost, comes back to me now as cardboard skepticism, vague realms, to claiming randomness in things, impelled to the blasé, though, and rightly dangerous dismissals of grotesque nihilism. There, ah, uh, there were all the fanatical ideations that I had so lazily perjured. Convictions diminished. I welcome the restraint, these degraded chains, as the more accurate way to live. And that the limits of consciousness would sit like heavy metaphors of tin within my head, sitting heavy things of brassy doubt and tinny scoffing upon a plank that levels in my brain. Each thought was without tangibility. If energy can turn into matter as long as it reaches the speed of light, well, if thought could approach the speed of the unreal mind, well, then such thought as that would process through the foreign bodies of the brain as nice lacrimation from out the cage that is an eye weeping, the eyes a cage, a dislocation, bequeathing unto us all that we can see and none of what we can sense or understand. The thought escapes through brutal means, through means of upsetting the balance, thought weeps in the great sorrow of entrapment. entrapment. Darling thought, released from the entrapment of the unreal mind within a lithic hell. This pragmatism ultimately leads nowhere, since the way things are is mainly nonsensical, and, and any point that we could make is without a bit of nonsense, a point that ultimately leads nowhere. Uh, with, a, uh, with a quiet, laden murmur, the cosmos beckoning the twirl of the dynamos to twirl again, as well as to start with the sequ se 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 sequential competence the manners of solid error into chimerical truth. Again, the cosmos caught in the nerve. Again, fashioned a sphere. The sphere could not have been without much trepidation on the part of God, who, while not being wise, could only be innocent, as it is that I guess the infinite is a perpetual beginning. And thus it appears that there is still more to be learned, even if there is not much to be learned, even if all the ground that could be covered had been covered already. What exactly am I implying? I'm implying this. Anything that does not have a beginning or an end can only have a beginning, at least in a world where things move forward instead of backward, like it is here. Something that has no beginning or end can then only have a beginning, at least if we are to say that the thing without a beginning or end can even exist in the first place. Taking this into account, things that exist must begin in order to exist, as it is that time perhaps moves forward 
and it seems to me there is a certain correlation between forward movement and the movement of beginning to end rather than end to beginning. One cannot start with an end because in order to for uh, uh, for, for, uh, for something to end, it must first begin. This is a preposterous assumption, but I will make it anyway. It seems to conform best to the uh, shape of my shapeless profundities. Nota! If something exists, it needs to have a beginning, though not necessarily an end, I guess. An end is the result of a beginning. It is a corollary. If the thing exists, it must follow the rules. No ideas, um, forms of beginning and ending, even if it doesn't either. If it exists, it must be doing at least one, but that one it will do forever and ever, thereby making what it is into a different figure of itself, though fundamentally it is the same, just furnished with an extra frame. Again, this is assuming the infinite, a thing with no beginning or end, is something that exists as a physicality or even as an idea. Infinite birth, eternal newness, no new things are, it only seems like new things are. Imagine it. It's amazing to think about. An eternal innocence. An eternal phase of supposed vastness in the world for the, for the beginning of something implies through causality the beginning of something wholly new to come. This is to me only an implication. All that is, assuming that all that is is able to be conscious of itself, has deceived itself, believing that more is yet to discover. In constructing this elaborate, this, 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 this elaborate, this elaborate facade, this embryonic sense of infinite utility, it only seems like more is yet to discover. Simply the nice fact that it cannot be unearthed, unearthed, <coughs> provides infinite fodder for expansion, a hole unable to be closed up. I manufacture myth and fit it in like an amateur, the lightly wafting coil of doubt infiltrating like a blinding gas. Then life shoehorned into being that could be touched and felt and smelled and killed, and life in eclipse, terminal life beginning the soul too late, the graduate morning morphed to evening in the unreal mind, and the unreal mind the eternal object, circumference stricken of axis, living forever in solitude, an agate that is tapered off, the object of being lacking, pl lacking sense, lacking sense and lacking place, lacking time ensconced within the tomb and and the useless squeeze box of time living as time could live outside the unreal cosmos as nothingness embodied disciple to a horrific void and the void itself an instant never repeated uh, disciple to a fraction deliberate scheme tunnel tunnel from uh, clear sight between the spaces unspent between the fictions of movement and the minutia between the fictions of stasis, of pause, and the behemoths, neither of which is a fiction, except they negate each other, and by existing frailly, side by side, do not seem to touch. My false comparison between universes provokes the cyclone and the psychosis, all unseen shades of color twisting and howling. The howl is unheard, but in the density of it. The heft, the heft of primordial heaven, an orderly hell. As it is that all vice involves an organization of the spirit against its natural volition. <laughs> and it seems to me that goodness is possessed of all humankind at the outset. And I suppose we make the choice to alter in the face of a cruel, paralyzed world the natural current of feeling given us by an infant god and space the utmost feeling and sense, the utmost peculiar sublimity caught, caught, and fragmented and diced by immortal time and the arch of seconds, destruction, the science, the, the, the giant <coughs> sudden, the giant sudden conf conflagration flares up and is dismissed by God and the God within the subtleties of control too varied to be, too similar in kind to not be. Repetition, the coda of tangibility and life, though in type they differ. This is the veil thrown over the perfunctory universe that englobes itself in confusion and denies the power of itself for the sake of not knowing the limits of the cosmos it created. God, I guess, shall engage in a functioning ambivalence, precluding trial and error. As of one who knows but does not know, he knows. As of one in the dark, needing no light to find the way out. However, the way out leads to another way back in. The way back in is an embryo, englobed by thoughtless, toiling, questionings, reliance, upon the enigma of self to stay an enigma since it seems to me that all of us stuck on this fucking planet cannot progress without the void in our souls without 
aperture, without impenetrability. This, this enigma, this enigma births an answer itself by default blossomed from the enigma, and so is still an enigma. I am a ceaseless capturing of atoms. I am a completion, a compilation of deceit and error committed over the years by the ego of humanity, which to me can be found in each of our brains. The brain shall lead us to meaning. The ego shall lead us away from it. Individuality is a fucking cancer. It was inside it as a reaction to a world of limits. In the beginning, there was no beginning. Nor any sort of end. Things were steeped in the apocrypha. The source made vague and intangible. An infinite object. The stock and store of life not yet, not yet compiled into the euphony. The tracks of time. Time was not. What begins did not begin and what ended did not end. All physicality was a void. And the void began to shake and tremble. And shake and tremble expectation of a distant ominous challenge. What had been would be destroyed, become some different thing. The horizon of the cosmos bathed in descript rays of terminal light. It is the light of death, and death the medium between mortal and immortal. And the light proceeded to crack open the embryo prematurely before the chain had completed its cycle, by which all that happens could happen again, and the chain became fragmented desultory and inanimate specters invading. Humber hovered in their pygmy relevance in the place above God, creating a place above God that had not been there before. And so began the restlessness of motion, the infinite layers upon layers of the finite. The finite contained within the infinite, the infinite unable to be Contained. 